start over, shall we? Uh, good morning. Technical issues this morning, working on something. I had this thought of uh, doing a little something here this morning uh, on behalf for the Lord, and I um, thought I'd just share a few meditations. It is the first day of the week, and uh, I wanted to just say hi to anybody that might be coming on um, because it's a, it is a privilege to uh, be able to broadcast out um, the good news along the way. And um, it is the first day of the week. It is not the Sabbath. It's the day of resurrection, or the new day. Um, and I so enjoyed this little background here of this, uh, the crosses and the tomb and such like that. And um, <clears throat> I also enjoyed this little verse. The verse came to mind here um, out of Genesis chapter 40. But remember me when it is not well with you. This is <clears throat> Joseph making a plea to the uh, <clears throat> to the chief butler, I think it was. Butler or Baker? <laughs> Can't remember off the top of my head. They were both in prison together. And Joseph interpreted a dream and made a plea to remember me as well with you. Well, our Lord Jesus, <clears throat> our Lord Jesus has died for us, has done a tremendous work for us. He's risen on high. And he's in the glory, and it's the first day of the week, the resurrection, resurrection day. So anyway, I thought I'd just share with you some thoughts about what is worship. What is worship? There is some confusion out there as to what worship is. And I thought, well, it'd be interesting to uh, share um, a, um, a meditation that I had some time ago with regards to worship. And of course, I'd like to bring on my handy dandy trust pad here as well. And let's get right, right to that. Um, so I hope everybody's doing well. Grab your coffee. I've got my coffee here as well. Um, but let's get right to um, this um, thought of, of what is worship. And so worship I have enjoyed is, is, and sorry for this, I hope this works here. So let's put, uh, let's put me down here and, um, let's see, is that coming across? That's not coming across. Is that, is that not coming across? Uh -huh -huh. Well, there we go. I thought, so that's coming across and then, and so I didn't, I didn't test that out. So that's not, ah, uh, interesting. Interesting. All righty. Well, um, well, that makes it interesting because I, I am writing on my, oh, let's see here. I'm going to put this in green to see if this works here. Oh, 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 I see where we're going with it. Sorry, I'm testing. I continuously test new technologies and try it out on you, but I now see where I am here. Give me a second here. All right. I think I have to be over here in the middle. Here we go. Okay, so what is worship? So we're going to put in, uh, put this in dark black here. What is worship? And I've enjoyed this before, and I hope I hope this is of meditation to you as well. Worship. <clears throat> we got little me, middle me, and you sitting down here. Okay. And uh, here's <clears throat> here's our here, here's our finite thing right here, and and then we have our blessed <clears throat> Lord Jesus here in the heavens, right? Lord Jesus, and uh, He's risen on high in the glory for us. Yes. And then we have God the Father. And um, we understand, too, we appreciate the fact that um, that uh, the Lord Jesus is sitting on his Father's right hand. Isn't that beautiful? Look it up. He's sitting on his Father's right hand. He doesn't technically have his own throne. His own throne is going to be given to him when he will be King of Kings and Lord of Lords in a future day here on this earth, but right now he's sitting on his father's throne. But let's look at what worship is. And I so enjoyed this here, and let's put this in purple here. Worship is offering up thoughts of our Lord Jesus to God, the Father, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Isn't that beautiful? So it's all about, let's see if I can get this thing, the, the worship is all about what God is to his son and what his son is to the father. Isn't that beautiful? It's that relationship that is so uh, difficult for carnal man to get a hold of is how precious is the son to the father. 
For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And so that is the beautiful thing is, is to come into his presence and, and meditate on who the Lord Jesus is to the Father. Now you say, well, 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 Mark, um, what about, what about, you know, what, what about what the Lord Jesus has done for me? Oh, beautiful. That's beautiful, right? So here's what the Lord Jesus has done for me. It's a different color, right? And I would offer up the fact that this is praise, all right? So this is this would be praise, and up here is going to be worship. Isn't that beautiful? So worship and praise are distinct in and of themselves. Praise would say, "Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul." Right? That's praise. It's well well worth it. Worship is to be able to understand. What did God, a holy, righteous God, do for three hours to his son on the cross? Think about it. When the sun went out, when man had done everything they had could possibly have done to him for, what, uh, six hours? He was three hours on the cross from nine to noon. And before that, he was up all night getting beaten and, and whipped and chained and face uh the the beard plucked out okay and and um and 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 spit upon and ridiculed and everything and he and and, and that is at the hand of man that's the hand of man and that'd be like psalm 69 you can look up psalm 69 okay but when it comes to when it comes to what Christ did for God. That's why Psalm 22 is so important. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Notice he doesn't say my father. He says my God. And um, then when you have um, when you have him hanging on the cross, he says, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. That is to say, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? That is the work going on. That is where worship comes in because of the fact that I am now meditating and understanding the price that the Lord Jesus had to pay on my behalf to a holy, holy, righteous God. So I hope that helps a little bit. That's a beautiful thing. So let's, let's, um, let's go into a little bit. This is the first day of the week where I do have the privilege and enjoyment of being able to go and and break bread with others and to remember his name as he's requested. But let's talk about some of the let's talk about some of the topics that may come up. All right. So when we're sitting there and we're and we're meditating upon these things, the Holy Spirit is able to bring forth different thoughts. Well, here we go. Thoughts of Christ, right? Thoughts of Christ. And let's just go over a few that I have I have seen over the years uh, during these times. The theme might be the blood, right? So all of a sudden, the uh, hymns that are sung and the and the um, the hymns that are sung and also the uh, 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 scriptures that are read, you know, are are being are actually in the process of of taking up with a topic. And that is what's beautiful. Give me a second here as I as I sit here and uh, monkey with my um, monkey with my. Uh, sorry, I am. I need to bring this back in. I'm there. We go. So the blood may be a topic. Um, another topic may be his name that comes up, and and so. So we have hymns that are brought up and scriptures that are brought up around his name. Love of the son, right? Love of the son. Love of the son to the father. There's that, there's that thing. But love of the son to me as well, right? We may have love of the of the father, right? Love of the father may be, may be part of that as well, right? Um uh the the whole 
the whole uh, I the whole concept. Let me see if I can drag this down a second here. So we are all. How about how about the concept of him as a and I'm going to be just technical here. A burnt offering, right? How about a burnt offering? How about Christ being the burnt offering as you find in Leviticus one? All right. What about him as the sin offering? Isn't that beautiful? There's a beautiful meditation right there on the sin offering in, as you find in Leviticus 4, right? You can look in between two, the peace offering and the meal offering. Christ is those as well. But these are things that may come up as a source of meditation when, while I'm gathered with others unto his name and the theme is rising up to God about his son, the Lord Jesus. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. And so there is a, a whole smattering of, of things. We may, consider, we may consider the story in Genesis 22, right? Where Abraham and Isaac are, are going up to the mountain. And there's so much teaching there. There's so much beautifulness there that we could, we could go on and on and on there we may take up the crucifixion we may do this this is worship isn't that beautiful this is worship and is to bring christ before god his father my father on the work that he's done and many aspects of that work okay well um there is some little meditations there about what worship is and even topics of worship as well. So I'd like to share <clears throat> before I jump off a, a another portion that came to me this morning as well. Grab some water. Another portion that came to me so well that happened on the first day of the week. So let's go. Let's go to Luke. Uh, we're going to go to the Gospel of Luke. All right. Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, chapter 24. And I'd like to read this little portion here. It's very, very precious and um, maybe give some background on it as well. And it says, <clears throat> this is after he's resurrected, right? In fact, this is resurrection day. So if you check it out, it is resurrection day. And the Lord Jesus has been very busy visiting with various disciples that day. And I wanted to read this little portion of these two that are walking for seven, by roughly seven and a half miles along the way, which if you calculate, it may take a couple, three hours to do that. So Luke 24, verse 13. Now behold, two of them were traveling the same day to a village called Emmaus, which was seven miles from Jerusalem. And they talked of all these things which had happened. So it was while they conversed and reasoned that Jesus himself drew near and went with them, but their eyes were restrained, so they did not know him. And he said to them, what kind of conversation is this that you have with one another as you walk and are sad? Isn't that beautiful? The Lord Jesus is walking, uh, he, he draws, these two are walking and they're down hard and they're walking away from Jerusalem. They're walking away from God's appointed center, if you will. And they're walking away and, and they were conversing with one another, right? And, and he pulls right on up in there and he says, what kind of conversation are you having? Why are you, why, 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 why are you sad? Then the one whose name was Cleopas answers unto him, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem? And, and have you not known the things which have happened there in these days? It was a big deal what was going on there in Jerusalem. The world knew about it or the Roman empire knew about it. And it was a big deal that was going on and certainly happened a couple, three days before, right? And he said to them, what things? And they said to him, the things concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty indeed, and word before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we were hoping that it was he who was going to redeem Israel. Indeed, 
Besides all this, today is the third day since these things happened. Yes, and certain women of our company who arrived at the tomb early astonished us. When they did not find his body, they came saying that, that he had also seen a vision of that they had also seen a vision of angels and said he was alive. And certain of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the woman women had said. But him they did not see. Then he said to them, O foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe all the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. And when they drew near to the village where they were going, and he indicated that he would have gone further, but they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, it is towards evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to stay with them. Now it came to pass as he sat at the table with them, and he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they knew him, and he vanished from their sight. I just want to talk for a moment there about that. They're sitting at the table, pulled out some food, and they were going to have a little dinner there. And he, apparently, I guess, I understand, is is it might be the guest would uh, would uh, start to serve a little bit, break the bread there, um, break open the loaf. He did give thanks for it. And their eyes were open. Some have said they finally saw his nail prints in his hands. <clears throat> Certainly the, the Lord had opened their spiritual eyes as well. They saw him. And what did they say? And they said one to another, did not our hearts burn with us while he talked with us on the road? And while he opened the scriptures to us, does your heart burn when the scriptures are read? It's the beautiful thing is to get, to have the Holy Spirit work through those scriptures and to meditate upon scriptures. And he started, remember, he started in the Old Testament. He started way back there, the very opening pages. And he went all the way through the written scriptures that they had, right? Which would have been technically only the Old Testament at that time. And he showed them where he was in those pages. Is that your, is that your desire too? Is to kind of look to find out where he is in the pages of scripture? It's a beautiful meditation. Did not our hearts burn with us while we talked with us on the road and while he opened the scriptures to us? So they arose that very hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven and those who were with them gathered together, saying, The Lord is risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. And they told about the things that had happened on the road and how he had known to them in the breaking of bread. Well, interesting enough, as I believe that it didn't take them as long to get back to Jerusalem as it did walking away from Jerusalem. And it all has to do with attitude. It all has to do with dismay. They were dismayed on the outbound, heading home. They were dismayed. And now, as they run back, their joy, because they had known they had Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ was risen indeed and was with them. And there he was in their midst. And it took them not a whole lot of time to cover that seven miles to head back. So I hope that make me, makes makes for a nice little meditation this morning here as these ones, you know, when we come into his presence around the Lord's table and we think about Christ and we meditate upon what he's done for us and what he has done on behalf of God. Isn't that beautiful? what he's done for a holy, righteous God on my behalf and a whole multitude of, of topics in the scripture can come flooding up. But maybe a theme, as I said earlier, maybe a theme can actually come through and take up a theme. It's just a beautiful, beautiful thing to be able to take a theme up and say, huh, look at this. Here's Christ, the Passover lamb. And he's a sacrifice. And it's just a beautiful thing to take up a theme and, and let our hearts joy with one another, with those that are there. But as these two on the road to Emmaus, why the Lord was in their midst. They didn't know it. Isn't that interesting? He walks into their house. They did not know the Lord was there. And sometimes 
the Lord wants to be with us, and he's there. He says, where two or three are gathered together unto or in my name, there am I in the midst. In my name is the key point. There am I in the midst. We can gather together, but it's not in his name. There's nothing wrong with that. But there is a time to gather together in his name. There am I in the midst. And to know him at that point is a beautiful, beautiful thing. So with that, let me um, wrap this up. And uh, maybe another time we'll be able to share some other thoughts on worship particularly. And there is some uh, beautiful meditations on that in, in as it regards to the Lord's Supper and the Lord's Table. But right now, may we enjoy the Lord Jesus Christ today at his table and uh, and bring him before the Father and thank the Lord for the work that he's done on my behalf. And with that, I am going to sign off. Sorry for the technical problems, but it's a joy to be with you this morning.